Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. The following is a demonstration of pulpal protection of a Class B depth amalgam cavity. For proper pulpal protection, a zinc oxide base and a zinc phosphate base will be placed. If you will note, there is a good deal of dentin removed beyond the dentoenamel junction in this area on the axial wall. First, we will take tap water and wipe out the debris from the cavity. This will be followed with dry cotton. Note we are not blowing a lot of air or any air into this preparation. Due to its depth, we will place the zinc oxide base into the deepened area. In this case, we are using Cavitec. This has the purpose, two purposes really, of soothing the tooth, being an obtundant, and also a added protection against the acid of the zinc phosphate base. A small amount is picked up on the end of an explorer or a spoon excavator or here a small ball burnisher and placed just into the deepened area. This is followed by an application about 30 seconds later of copolite, a cavity varnish. This is placed on the tooth, over the cavitec, and on the cable surface margins of the tooth, as you will notice here. We use a root canal file that is bent for the angle we wish with a bit of cotton attached to it for the application. The powder for the zinc phosphate cement is dispensed onto the slab using an SS white powder dispenser. It has a large end and a small end. And these are the two ends that we will use, one of each for the measurement for our primary consistency. Notice how it has been packed into the uh, bottle. Pack the measuring device into it, bring it out, and now we will add extra to the upper right-hand corner of the slab. This is because we are going on to a secondary mix of cement. Notice also the powder is taken care of and measured and it will be cut into six equal parts before we do anything with the liquid at all. He is now cutting six equal parts of the cement. The liquid is hygroscopic so that we leave it until we are very ready to the last moment to drop the liquid and start mixing. Swirl the bottle so that the waters of hydration will be mixed thoroughly into the acid. Dispense six drops with the orifice of the dispensing bottle parallel with the slab. Each of the increments of powder will be mixed for 15 seconds. They will be mixed over a large area of the slab and with a flat of the spatula. Before a, the next increment of powder is drawn into this mix, notice it will, the mix on the slab will be brought all up into one single mass, not left out over the slab, so that the powder will be put into this entire mass at once and then spatulated. Notice the large area of the slab. Notice the flat of the spatula. It's hitting all of it in the constant bringing the material back and forth together so that you do not leave a lot all around the slab. Notice the finger that's holding the spatula. It is blanching a bit. This is putting pressure upon the spatula so that we are getting a mix here, a good mix. At the end of five, which is coming up right now, the operator should test to see if it is at primary consistency because we are mixing to a consistency. The material should draw up about an inch, inch and a half now that shows that it did it. We will show you again so that you get the feel of it. If you were doing this for your own case, you would not do it this many times. One or two is enough. But notice, an inch and a half or two inches. That is primary consistency, which we will use 
if we were seating an inlay or a crown. A bit of this primary consistency is placed in the upper left-hand corner. We will use that later. Then a large amount is brought in, about one-fourth of what you have up there, and just mix thoroughly until it is thoroughly wet. Then another match is brought in. It's brought in and mixed again, just until the wetness. As you notice, we're getting to a smaller and smaller area, simply because it's getting heavier and heavier. There's no set time for mixing this, but do not take too long. Now, we know here that it's getting pretty well mixed, and the test of it is, is that you can roll it in your fingers, and then you will take small amounts of this to place into the cavity. Now, we will test this. You notice it does not stick to the fingers. When this is mixed correctly, it will not stick to fingers, it will not stick to instruments, but it will stick to the tooth. Notice the smallness, the size of these increments, extremely important. When you're placing cement into a cavity, you take half what you think and then cut that in half. Now the primary consistency that we placed in the upper left-hand corner, you can see has been touched with a cow horn explorer and is being brought to the preparation. This is a very acid material and is being placed around the periphery of the cavity, not onto the center of it or in the deepest area at all. This is a ring that will help in retention of the cement base and it will also help in sealing the cement base off at the periphery. Then the small amounts that you've cut will be placed on the back of a spoon excavator or some suitable instrument and brought into the cavity preparation. Remember how small these were and notice what this is. There's one of them and notice it's still too large. But this is fine. Do you notice it did not stick to the instruments? We have not lubricated, we have not done anything to the instruments. Now with the spoon excavator, you take off the excess. Very gently a burnishing action, notice this. And we'll put it in the place that we wish. Now a 25C can be used to actually shape this, this cement base to the thing that we wish. Notice the tapping, burnishing action. And now the cement base is in place. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.